Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee. I am James Fetterman, president of the Virginia Education Association. We are on the right path to reopening schools for in-person instruction. Still, we need to be driven by the health and safety of first and foremost the students we teach and to ensure proper mitigation measures for our students and our educators. We believe this substitute addresses our school community's need to pay special attention to address this pandemic's mitigation in our schools. On Friday, the CDC released an operational strategy guide for the safe delivery of in-person instruction at the K through 12 school levels. It's the first new school specific guidance issued by the CDC during the Biden administration. It has been eagerly awaited by families and educators who want to get physically back in person learning as soon as safely as possible. The guidance calls for layering the five mitigation strategies essential to the safe delivery of in person instruction. All five measures must be in place to provide the greatest level of protection. The agency says requiring the universal and correct use of masks by everyone in all settings, strictly enforcing physical distancing of at least six feet if community transmission rates are substantial or high to the greatest extent possible where rates are lower, requiring hand washing and respiratory etiquette and providing the necessary supplies and training, cleaning and maintaining family healthy facilities, including disinfecting and ventilation and contact tracing in combination with isolation and quarantine. Educators have been among the true heroes throughout this crisis, continuing throughout the pandemic to educate our students. They desperately need our support across every Virginia community, and that is a state house as well. We urge the passage of the substitute SB 1303 by Delegate Van Valkenburg. Thank you so much. I just wanted to, I represent Henrico County Schools, and I just wanted to take a moment this morning to uh, acknowledge the work that has gone on to try to shape this bill, to meet the needs of our school divisions, our families. I think what we certainly in Henrico feel very strongly to support the substitute because we feel like it has addressed a lot of the concerns that we have had in our community about trying to offer virtual and obviously our goal of getting our students back into classroom uh, as soon as we possibly can. Uh, the original bill, we were very concerned about the ongoing costs and when the COVID money, CARES Act money, money will no longer be available, uh, the cost to the school division. We feel really strongly we have done the best we can with the technology, thanks to some great corporate support and uh, our school board has really worked hard to try to provide uh, alternative connections to the students. And we look forward to maybe a time when we can offer uh, even a virtual school, but greater access to virtual courses. Thank you so much for your time. And we certainly want to go on record as saying we do support the substitute. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and, and members of the subcommittee. Uh, my name is Mike Martin. I'm the president of the Virginia chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, we support Senate Bill 1303 and continue even now to strongly support the reopening of schools safely. So schools, they aren't just a place of learning. Families rely on in-person school to provide childcare, reliable nutrition, a safe space for children to socialize, and even provide access to mental, emotional, and physical health services, more needed now than ever. Schools also continue to play a critical role in addressing racial and social inequities. In December, our chapter surveyed 203 pediatric providers throughout the Commonwealth. We found that many of us are facing in our offices and clinics an alarming decline in, their, in the mental, behavioral, academic, and general well-being of children that we care for. Uh, many of these problems and, and deficiencies are going to be long-lasting, and even reopening schools now will not reverse that. We're likely to face these problems for the years and decades to come. However, returning to in-person learning with well-thought-out mitigation strategies is the right prescription for our children to begin to reverse this trend as they continue to suffer the consequences of a pandemic that has no clear end in sight. It is our hope that you will support this bill urgently that is needed. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of Virginia PTA, I want to share a couple of thoughts with you this morning. I also did not see the substitute in advance and was trying to quickly read through it here. Um, well, we, we greatly appreciate the changes that have been made and the clause that makes it effective only for the 2021-22 school year. Um, I want to be clear, we do support five days of in-person instruction for students in the fall. 
from the start of the pandemic, we've supported parents and staff having the option of full in-person and full virtual instruction. And we think it's critical that parent and staff be involved in these reopening plans and that our local school boards retain authority uh, to engage our parent and school community in those important discussions, especially as we shift to ensuring that we are completely following the CDC guidelines um, and possibly opening and closing schools on an as needed basis within the context of the entire county. Um, I also want to say that we greatly appreciate and support the use of hybrid instruction uh, in cases of high transmission, but it should not be defined as meeting the standard of offering in-person instruction. Uh, we recognize the, um, the role that our school system plays within our local communities in addressing food insecurity, addressing mental health challenges. And if we're going to offer in-person instruction, then in-person instruction for five days should be what we are providing to our students with full CDC uh, measures implemented. And we strongly urge the General Assembly to fully fund our schools and to ensure that as federal funds become available, that we work to ensure that those seconds. federal dollars are allocated to fix school staffing and infrastructure challenges that have faced our schools for many years. Thank you. Right, uh, I want five days of the person learning too. Um, so, um, expect, you know, I think that's important to to the utmost extent that we can have five day in person learning. That's what we should want, and that should be the goal. Um, I think at this level, we do need to make sure that we're being responsible and responsive, right? Which is um, responsive being a, some localities have different resources and needs and are going to have different levels of COVID spread than others. And so I think to the people who talked about that, that's why we have an outlet valve based on the VDH uh, guidance um, that they can close individual schools when there's high spread. That is, a, is an exemption that's in there when necessary and makes the VDH outline the clear standards for what that spread is. Um, and I think, you know, the CDC guidelines following that allows for the flexibility necessary because we don't know what we don't know, right? We don't know what's going to, the COVID virus is going to look like in a year. Um, I think Alan's concerns about virtual learning are incredibly valid and is one of the reasons why I'm really skeptical of virtual learning in general. I think, Alan, the worst of your worries are solved by the um, uh, sunset clause. That, that makes sure that this is just one more year. And, and, and I'm a little hesitant to put too many guardrails on that um, moving forward. But the last thing I'll say is I think that this both is a substantive return to school and also a symbolic saying that we want to get kids back in in a safe and, and reasonable way. And 